Hello students, today I am going to take lecture on advanced Java unit 6 Hibernate. In this video, I am going to teach you Hibernate cache architecture. Hibernate cache architecture is most important part of Hibernate architecture. So now let us start with Hibernate cache architecture. First of all, block diagram of Hibernate cache architecture. This cache architecture resides between database and your application. As shown in this diagram, our application is connected with Hibernate first level cache. Now, the usage of cache is to reduce number of database interactions. And the motive of using Hibernate cache architecture is performance improvement. Due to cache architecture, Hibernate will only execute when transaction is committed or when flush method is being explicitly called to complete the transaction. So here as shown in the diagram, Hibernate first level cache is also known as a session level cache. For example, if this application want to perform a read operation, so this application will directly go to first level cache instead of giving database hit and search for the object to perform read operation. If this object is not found in first level cache, then it will go and search to second level cache. Still, if it is not found in second level cache, that is cache miss, then it will go to database and database hit will perform and the object is retrieved from database. The first level cache is also known as session cache. Here session cache is mandatory cache. In Hibernate architecture, one need to compulsorily implement this first level cache through which all the requests must pass through. The first level cache is also for performance improvement and to reduce database hits. Now second level cache. Second level cache is also known as session factory level cache. As we have studied in Hibernate architecture, session object was for initializing transaction and session factory object was defined one per database. So second level cache is also known as session factory level cache where one can store whole application within second level cache. So if application required any object and if it is not present in first level cache, then that object will be present in second level cache. This reduces a database hit and also improve overall performance of Hibernate. For example, Oracle coherence is the best example for second level cache. Entire application may be available in second level cache. Here, second level cache mainly responsible for caching object across session. So, first level cache will store all the object within session and outside the session all the object which are known as session factory level objects are stored in second level cache. Why cache architecture? Caching is all about application performance optimization. So for improvement of overall performance of Hibernate query language, caching is performed, caching is implemented. Now this cache architecture is situated exactly between application and the database to avoid number of database hit as many as possible. If it reduces database hits and if objects are available in first or second level cache, then obviously there would be performance improvement in Hibernate execution. To give a better performance for critical application, this cache architecture is used. Here the first cache is mandatory while second cache is optional. Next is Hibernate cache architecture, first level cache. Now significance of first level cache is this cache is known as session cache as we have discussed. The session object keeps an object under its own control before committing it to database. So if the query is being performed, the transaction will not go to database until it is committed or flush method is called. If you issue multiple updates to a particular object, Hibernate will try to delay doing update as long as possible. The reason is to reduce number of update SQL statement issued. So if let's say one object named as a result is there in Java application and every time the result is being updated, Hibernate architecture will try to delay this update as long as possible 
because every time the result is being updated so if we are updating it every time to database then database hit increases which eventually reduces overall performance in order to improve performance hibernate will delay updates and after the final update is being committed or the query is being committed then and only then it will reflect changes to database if you close the session all the object being cached are lost because first level cache is known as session level cache second level cache which is known as session factory level cache this is responsible for caching object across session so if session is being closed then object will be unavailable in first level cache but it may be available in second level cache second level cache is an optional cache and first level cache will always be consulted before any attempt is made to locate object to second level cache so in hibernate cache architecture whenever application required any object obviously the first thing to communicate inside cache architecture is first level cache if it is not found that is if the object is not found in first level cache then and only then it will switch over to second level cache any third party cache can be used with hibernate for example org.hibernate.cache.cache provider interface this interface is available in hibernate library which must be implemented to provide hibernate with a handle to cache implementation so third party cache can also be configured in second as a part of second level cache with this we complete hibernate cache architecture students According to syllabus of GTU, Hibernate Cache architecture is important topic. So please do prepare it. Thank you all of you.